Great song for Siamese twins. They're joined at the head. We're very excited about the twins, so we'll play them two in a row. Twin spin, twin spin. It's a twin spin. Twin, twin spin. And the operation to separate them is this evening, and all our prayers go out to both their families on both sides. It's a risky operation. We've got them the Spice Girls. It's a nice. Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio. Q-E-H-R. Queer Radio. Radio. If you're feeling queer, we're here. This is for John. He's got massive ears. He's having them pinned back. He loves Simply Red. Holding back the ears. (laughs) Ivan Brackenbury. Out out and about. about. Reaching out. And touching patients. Well... (laughs) Oh my goodness, it's me old mate, Snoop Doggy Dog. Yo, what up? This is Big Snoop Dogg hanging out with my nephew, Ivan Breckenbrae. And, and you know him. how we do it, so yes, turn sir. up. I know him. Hello to Peter Pennine. He's got dandruff the size of breadcrumbs. And why do birds suddenly appear every giant? Dandruff the size of breadcrumbs. Hospital radio. Disease hour on Hospital Radio. I want to say hello to Jim because he thought he was a goner because he needed a new heart, lungs, liver and kidneys and spleen and it were no good. We, he had no chance and he was on the waiting list. But then luckily the netball team coach crashed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mambo number five. And they were all donor carriers so in that lucky, I know it's sad. For them, but their loss is his gain, and we'll celebrate that with a little bit of Louis Vega. A little bit of Monica in my life, a little bit of Erica by my side, a little bit of Rita's all I need, a little bit of Tina's what I see. Let's take a quick break. Do you remember the 60s? Then it's about time you started thinking about planning your funeral. <laughs> Well, if you love my show, you'll absolutely love the lady on after me. Her name's uh, Joan Arkwright, and she's got a country music show called Country Tracks, and she's a great broadcaster. And she probably won't thank me for saying this, but she's had a vaginal prolapse. (laughs) (laughs) And we've really missed her, we really have. So that's Joan Arkwright's Country Tracks on next on Hospital Radio. Joan Arkwright's Country Tracks. Country (laughs) Tracks. Thank you very much, Ivan Brackenbury. Uh, now, my next guest, uh, he's put words into the mouths of Keanu Reeves, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jamie Foxx and Bono. He's starring here in Edinburgh every night in Rockstar Babylon here at the Gilded Balloon and featuring the voice of Stephen Fry. Please welcome John Holmes. John, how yes, are you? Fine, you? Uh, very well, thank Good. you. I'm slightly, slightly on edge. I can um, tell, yes. <laughs> You're in a Geordie coming out, isn't it? That's what it is. Yes, that's what's happened, uh, being, being outed in that way. Um, now, this, this being a broadcast, yes. I'm, I'm very slightly reluctant to ask you, but you, you, you got the largest fine ever yeah. for a taste and decency offence. Yeah. Uh, it was some time ago. Are you, uh, it, it are you allowed to talk about it freely now? Yes, what, to, to, well, we'll find out. Um, it, right. was, it was. Uh, I'm not proud of it. Let me let me start now by saying that um, I was at the time. Obviously, um, I, I did a show on a on a on a radio station called Virgin Radio. It no longer exists, of course. That wasn't my fault um, in any way. But I had a, a late night show on Virgin, and one of the uh, games we used to play was called Swearing Radio Hangman for the under twelves. <laughs> <laughs> And while that sounds good on paper, <laughs> <laughs> Ofcom disagreed with it. Mm. But we, we, we ran it for six months, and what would happen is it was in the middle of the night, and parents would uh, happily ring up, wake their little children up to come on and play Hangman 
uh, with swear words, and that was fine uh, until we did it for a while, and it was just silly words. But the one, um, I, I, I don't know whether I can say it on here or not, but I'll say it. The one that got us into trouble was, it was a five letters, three letters, four letters. Um, and then it was, if you want to do it, right, um, there was a the, the little girl, nine-year-old Katie, she went, is there a, um, is there a, is there a S in it? And it, and it so I said, yeah, it's the first letter of the, of the first word. She said, is there a, is there a T? I said, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the middle word, and that's the, uh, that's the first and the last letter of the three-letter middle word. Is there a W? Yeah, that's the first letter of the last word. <laughs> and eventually, she ended up saying the phrase, soapy tit wank. Now that... <laughs> I, I said, I'm not proud of it. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, she, she then shouted that down the telephone and I played some Deacon Blue. That's probably where... <laughs> where, <laughs> where it all went so horribly Yeah, that was, that was... Amazing. But it, yeah, it was... A, it was a, uh, you know, it was a competition that we were doing. Very popular at the yeah. time. <laughs> but, um, but, I got, but I got fired, uh, uh, even though the boss of the radio station had, loved, had agreed... I mean, he produced the show. He was going, this is brilliant, keep doing it. And then uh, someone upstairs said, actually, can you stop doing that and leave the building quickly? Um, no. <laughs> and, and the fine was £150,000, which they uh, got down to 75 by sacking me. Uh, so thanks them. But you, uh, you're a busy boy, John. You, uh, a lot of broadcasting, obviously. You write, uh, you've written a number of books... Is that how many books you've written? Uh, well, uh, yeah, well, one's been published. I've written loads, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Uh, but the other two come out this year, so that's all right. I wrote this book called Status Quo and the Kangaroo, okay? It's a collection of, of myths and rumours and legends about and um, what I then found out to be libelous stories about rock stars. Um, the Guardian lawyers are going to love this one as well. No, it's, uh, it's a book of these stories, and, and, and people, uh, you know, many people have heard this kind of thing. It's like Van Halen having all the blue M&Ms taken out of their bowls backstage, and they demand that on their list of requests when they do gigs or something. People were talking about this, and I thought, you know what, there's, a, there's loads of these stories out there, and if I go and get some roadies drunk, they can probably tell me some of the things about, you know, rock stars that they've worked with, which worked very well. So anonymously, drunk roadies just telling me bad things about Celine Dion, I then write it down in what I like to think is an hilarious fashion um, <laughs> and uh, and then I have a meet, then we get the book uh, pub to be published uh, and, and the lawyers at Penguin it was their most legal book I think they said in uh, in their history so the book eventually we got around all that book got published and I um, and it's called Status Quo and the Kangaroo as you said uh, and then it came out in America uh, and it turned out Americans had never heard of status quo uh, so we had to change the title to Rockstar Babylon which is uh, the title of the, the show here as well and um, they'd also never heard of kangaroos uh, either, so that's, uh, or books actually <laughs> so uh, uh, um, so it's Rockstar Babylon it became in paperback and the show I'm doing here is kind of based on that and and Just then he's performed stuff. stories? Performed. I, more, more, you say performed. Read out and mocked uh, round oh. me. Uh, and Stephen Fry is the voice of the footnotes. And I, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a lighting and sound spectacular for all. Yes. Yeah. It's like Cirque du Soleil in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Stephen Fry, he's, he's, you've just dragged him into a sound studio and he's recorded... Yeah, exactly, at gunpoint, yeah, mostly that, yeah. yeah. Now, the reason that Stephen did it, uh, which was very, very nice of him, was uh, I used to write, when he used to host the BAFTAs, because mm -hmm. um, obviously I come from a writing background as well, and I used to write his script with him, for the, um, uh, or co-write it with him, um, and um, Ivor Badil, and we used to write a script for him, and I just sort of... Uh, you know, called in a favour, really, and he, and he did it for me, which was very nice, because his voice... You know, there's the bits and footnotes in the book. There's a story in, in the show about the lead singer of Faith No More um, uh, who would unscrew uh, hair dryers every time he went into a hotel. He'd unscrew the complimentary hair dryer, um, ha have, a, have a crap in it, right, <laughs> and then screw it back together again and leave it for the next guest. That's... You, you see, you make that noise now, but if Stephen Fry told you that, you're going, oh, that's lovely, isn't it? That's really nice. <laughs> oh. So that is kind of, you know, taking the edge off for me. That's and that, that <laughs> not not out of you too. He doesn't take the edge off. No, nothing to do with that. <laughs> and is that is that that is how then you put the, the the words into the mouths of the likes of Keanu Reeves, Leonardo DiCaprio? Have you have you written for them? Yeah. For the award yes, exactly that. They they turn up um, to present these awards at BAFTA and so on and so forth. And, what, and then um, the, there was one bit backstage at, at BAFTA because um, you know, it's on the telly and stuff. And they and it's like forty five seconds to go, Mr. Reeves, and he's standing just off stage. And I'm standing there and thinking, ah, oh, Keanu Reeves, excellent. And then this wardrobe assistant came over to. Um, do his bow tie, you know, just to adjust his bow tie. 30 seconds to go, Mr. Reeves, and she adjusted his bow tie. And it just, it was a proper bow tie. She undid it by accident, and it just fell sort of apart. And he wasn't phased in the slightest. And, I, and, and he just stood there like that and went, 
20 seconds to go, Miss Regan, she's frantically trying to tie his bow tie, but didn't know how. Um, and it was a marvellous moment, because then Richard Gere just sort of stepped in, tied Keanu Reeves' bow tie back up for him, and just went, you're good to go. <laughs> and he went, so fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> very good. Ladies and gentlemen, John Holmes, nightly here at the Gilded Balloon. Thank you very much indeed, John Holmes. <laughs> Jim Jeffries is about to step onto the stage for a chat, but before he does, we're privileged to get some stand-up from a previous winner of So You Think You're Funny, a man whose show called An Open Letter to Richard Branson is on every night at the Pleasance Courtyard. Please welcome Tom Rigglesworth. Hello. Hello. Before I came up here, I went, I went to see my dad. I'm, I live in London, and my dad lives in Sheffield, and I sort of visited him on the way up. I visited my dad to give him a computer lesson, because he got a brand new computer, and he keeps it in the spare room, uh, which is weird. Uh, he keeps it under a white sheet as well, and I thought the computer had died when I first saw it. What's it doing under there, Dad? And uh, he unveils it, and my dad's got no idea with computers. Like, I'm sure a lot of you parents, you know, just the, the gulf between young and old technology-wise is immense, isn't it? And uh, he reveals his computer, and he's naming the bits as they get exposed. He's saying, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's the keyboard, that, Dad. Dad, that's the printer. That's the printer, that. He's getting it all wrong. And I gave him the IT mantra that we all adhere to, the fact that you must uh, back up Back up all. It's very important, isn't it? You must back up, back up, back up. I mean, if you really need it, print it out. But always back up. And we did a bit of Word and Outlook, stuff like that. And then I said, right, Dad, let's have a look at the big one, the, uh, the internet. And I showed him the logo of the internet, the big blue E. And I said, Dad, double-click that, surfs up. Now, has anyone here ever tried to teach an elderly friend or relative how to use a computer? <laughs> It's, a, it's an absolute minefield, isn't it? They, they don't have the motor skills. They don't have the motor skills. It, it completely blindsided me. My dad tried to double-click it. He clicked on it once, and then his hand just spazzed. Like that. <laughs> it just sort of jerked, you know. His upper body tensed. So rather than double-click it, he simply picked up the big blue E, <laughs> dragged it, <laughs> then dropped it in the recycle bin. <laughs> I said, whoa, Dad, what's happened? He said, I don't know, son, my hand just slipped. You saw it, son, it just went. I said, where's the big blue E? He says, it's in that bin, son. <laughs> I said, oh, Christ, Dad, you've, uh, you've deleted the internet. Dad. <laughs> he said, is that bad? I said, yes, that's pretty bad, that, Dad. To be honest, there was a lot of work in there. That was, uh, <laughs> that was about 50 years of mankind moving forward, that, Dad. That was progress, pro, and you've deleted the bastard. <laughs> my dad started crying. <laughs> No, I thought, fuck him, he gave me this nose. So, uh, <laughs> another podcast-friendly joke, both for the F word and the visual. <laughs> I, said, I said to him, Dad, they're going to know it's you. They're gonna, they can track this sort of thing. You've seen them on the news with paedophiles, Dad. They're going to be all over you. And uh, I went home, left him to it. Right, I went home. And the next day, my dad phoned me up, and he had a remarkably uh, optimistic lilt in his voice. He goes, hey, Tom, it's your dad. Great news, son, great news. I was looking in the recycle bin, and the internet was still there. <laughs> well, the bin men don't come till Thursday, do they? <laughs> so I clicked on it, and it said, would you like to restore the internet? So I selected, yes, son, I'm out the woods, everything's fine. <laughs> I said, that's great news, Dad, good to hear. He said, yes, but I've learnt my lesson, son, and I don't want that to happen again, so I'm, I'm doing what you told me, you know, I'm, I'm taking your advice. I said, you just stop. Stop there, Dad. Stop everything. You're not trying to back up the internet, are you? <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't do that, Dad. You can't back up the internet. He said, no, I'm not trying to back it up. No, I'm, uh, I'm printing it out. <laughs> <laughs> this is page nine of 22 billion. I'm going to need more ink. There are a lot of these I couldn't show your mother. <laughs> Imagine that, imagine a virus sweeping around the World Wide Web and all the information superhighways went crunch like that and the internet as we know it just got wiped out and the only person with a copy was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> who'd printed, he'd just be on the phone all day to people going, hello? Right, there's a flight leave Gatwick at 8.15, is that any use? <laughs> Constantly manning phones. Ah, hello again Steve, let me just check. No, I'm afraid you've been outbid. <laughs> Cheerio. How about that, Tom Rigglesworth? <laughs> He's performing at this fringe for five nights only at the Adderbelly doing a show called The Hit. He's been described as offensive, most offensive and beyond offensive by the lazy journalists who all read the same press releases. You make your own mind up. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Jeffries.
Uh, Jim, your show is called, it's called The Hits. Yes. I'm only doing five nights and I hadn't written any new material all year, so I thought it would be a bit rude of me to come up and do a full run of old material. So I just uh, thought I'd do five days and get a whole lot of money and run out, basically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> basically steal audience members off the people who are struggling and have put effort in. Um... <laughs> But as it happened, between the time that I called it that and actually did the show, I've written 30 minutes of pretty good stuff. So, um, yeah, so it's old stuff plus a little bit of new stuff just chucked in. So, what a show. <laughs> now, uh, since you were here uh, last, you were a guest last year, you've, uh, you've moved out to America? I've moved out to America, yeah. I, I live on, in Venice Beach in Los Angeles. That is a, that's a, that's a remarkable turnaround. I mean, I can, I can remember when you were living in some sort of um, you were living in a, a, sh- a flat share somewhere the, in. It, it, I, I used to yeah, I used to live in a share flat with other comedians in Manchester in Wally Range, and uh, I, I got pretty down. And at my lowest point, um, I was standing on a pier in Blackpool, about to jump off. Uh, <laughs> but I, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> You live in Hollywood now. How does, how does this come about then? Um, I, I, I went over there just to do a few gigs and uh, I convinced uh, HBO that I was famous in Britain, which was an out and out lie. And uh, <laughs> luckily enough, they don't care what Britain's doing and they don't pay attention. They believe me. And uh, I got my own uh, hour TV special. Yeah. Fantastic. Where, where was that recorded? That was recorded in a theatre in New York, NYU. And the, the, the specials that year were like uh, me, Ricky Gervais, Will Farrell, Chris Rock and Lisa Lampanelli. So yeah, my name just fitted in there with no one even fucking noticing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's bizarre. Yeah. How did that work out for you then? Is it, 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 came, it came out really good. The, the one thing they said to me, because as a dirty comic, um, HBO has no censorship whatsoever. You can say whatever you want in their show, but they're very concerned about how the ratings marks will be at 15 minutes. So the only rule I got given was don't say cunt for 15 minutes. <laughs> Which I didn't, but at 15 minutes 30. You ever seen that scene in Rocky when he had to go back to Southpaw and he was happy again? <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> and I can tell you what, I had no drop out at the 15 minute mark. Shit loads at the two minute mark. <laughs> Does a, does a little light come on then? It's uh, you know, like this is sort of old fashioned BBC applause sign saying it is now safe to say cunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I knew. I think the sentence was Aunt Panda's cunts. That was. <laughs> I thought I'd start with a light, sort of fluffy one. It was just about how they won't reproduce and they just sort of, you know. <laughs> They just look at each other. Some of your sort of surreal, whimsical stuff. Yeah, if you put me into a cage with something, I'll fuck it. They sit there. (laughs) I don't think I'm meant to be on The Guardian. I think... uh, (laughs) Is this a broadsheet or a normal-sized paper? It's uh, hard to tell these days. Yeah. Now, uh, you are, I mean, obviously you do get described as, as being pretty offensive. Is, yes. that, is that something, do you, do you ever write st- uh, stuff and go, oh, that is, I mean, that's, that is top notch, but it's not particularly, oh, well, I, not I particularly you, charmless. I, I, I used that. to be a very angry young man. I used to be much more offensive than I am now, and I've mellowed. I'm still fairly offensive. <laughs> still fa- my main story from my show this year is about taking a friend of mine with muscular dystrophy to a brothel, but it's a heartwarming story. <laughs> Where before it would have just been nasty, like I had to undress him, pay for the hooker, you know, tell her what to do. And I've never been a hooker. I just, I'm just a good friend. And the difference is though, I'm not, I'm not angry anymore. So now it's, it's weird, when I go on the road, a lot of people who were fans of mine maybe five years ago, there's like 10 of those guys. And um, <laughs> they get really disappointed that I'm not, uh, I'm not as offensive as I used to be. And also, I used to get really bothered because people used to uh, think that's how I was as a, as a human being all day. And you can't be that guy all day. I'd just be punching women in the street and just <laughs> kicking babies. And I don't want... That's not what anyone wants. Um, <laughs> so, so I've mellowed. You certainly have. You seem, you seem remarkably calm. Um, do you, I actually... I, got, I once got billed as a risque comedian. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely... Is that the Balamori tour? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it may well have been. I was possibly, possibly the rudest, rudest person in it. Uh, yes, thank you for bringing that again. Uh, again. I think I seem to remember you brought it up last year. Uh, now, uh... Well, I'm only doing the hits this year, mate. 
That's one of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, the cricket starts tomorrow. Is this podcast going out after that? Uh, it will probably no, it'll probably go out just before the cricket. Just cricket before starts. the cricket. Who thinks? Uh, okay, it's lovely to ask this in Scotland. Who thinks England will win? Me. <laughs> <laughs> but both teams are equally shit. It's worrying, isn't it? We've uh, we both we've lost our bottle essentially, England and, and Australia. There's no last 2005. Both teams showed the capacity to be absolutely amazing at times, whereas it's, it's sort of been the opposite this time. Both no. teams have been unexpectedly awful. If England do win, if they have the audacity to have another ticker tape parade after this one, I'll be surprised. <laughs> this is the whole problem with 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 English sport: is when they won those cricket things, the carry on, like. <laughs> You're professional fucking athletes. You're meant to win. That's your job. <laughs> you know, Australians win. We come home at the airport and the Prime Minister stands there and goes, throw the trophy in the pile, will you, son? <laughs> Take that, class of 2005. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Jim Jeffries. <laughs> Thanks very much to everyone on the show today. Ivan Brackery, Tom Rigglesworth, Sarah Millican, John Holmes and Jim Jeffries. <laughs> to play us out, a double act that's been getting five-star reviews and sell-out crowds catch their show, School of Pop, every night in the underbelly. Please welcome Frisky and Manish. All right, guys, my name is Lily Allen. <laughs> and I'm here today to do my new single, which... Sorry, that's not the right song. We're How doing... perfectly marvellous to bump into you, Lily. I've been following your career with some interest. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> who are you? I'm Noel Coward, obviously. Now, your lyrics, they're very unique, but they lack a certain bounce. Would you like me to show you how it's done? Uh, no, seriously, all right, I'll just do my song. It's I was riding the... with this on my bike all day because I've got to go in my licence. It doesn't get me down, I feel okay because the sides I'm seeing are priceless. Everything seems to look as it should, but I wonder what's going on behind doors. I felt looking dapper, sitting with a slabber, I see it's a pimp at his crack. Or you might laugh, you might frown, walking round London town. Suns and sky, oh why, oh why, would you want to be anywhere else? Suns and sky, oh why, oh why, would you want to be anywhere else? If you look with your eyes, everything seems nice, but if you look twice, you can see it's all lies. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, not quite what I was going for, actually. There was no, a little old lady walking down the road, struggling back from Tesco. People in the city having lunch at the park, yes, it's called Alfresco. A boy comes along to offer a hand before it's had time to accept it. It's a row over the head, doesn't care if he's dead, so he's got a little and wallet. Ha! You might laugh, you might frown, walking round London town. Suns and sky, oh why, oh why, would you want to be anywhere else? Suns and sky, oh why, oh why, would you want to be anywhere else? If you look with your eyes, everything seems nice. But if you look twice, you'd see it's all lies. That's city life, it's city life, it's witty life. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yes. Um, Perfectly simple. Yeah, thanks, Noel. You're welcome. Um, don't think you've quite got it, yeah? Like, what I'm about? It's about being laconic and dry. Like, you don't really care. Well, why don't you give us an example, then? Yeah, all right. So I do one of your songs, yeah? You did that one, what, I've been to a marvellous party? Yeah, that's one of mine. I can relate to that. It was the most fabulous excitement I've never seen such a carry-on Obviously it couldn't happen Anywhere else but on the Riviera It's most peculiar People's behaviour Away from Belgravia Would make you aghast So much variety Watching society Scampering past on Wednesday last I've been to a marvellous party That's what makes my life so fucking fantastic, <laughs> basically. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We have been frisky and mannish. The Guardian, live at the Edinburgh Festival 2009. You've really got me in a state today, Sarah. I've been